Hello, and welcome to another episode of New Counter Generation's movie panel discussions. I'm David from Catholic Contrast, joined by Renee from Reborn Pure, Nan from Parables of the Film Industry, and Joseph, the Catholic Apologist. This time we have a movie that has been requested to us many times over the months. It was the one movie that came out earlier this year when we were doing a lot of Christian movie panels that we just didn't get to. And ironically, it happened to be the one that everybody was saying was the best out of all of them. Everybody was like, you gotta watch Risen! You got to see Risen. It's really good. And so we finally did end up seeing it. And now we're here to review it. So what were your guys' impressions? My family, I remember we were talking about the Young Messiah sure, yeah. the video I was talking about with my family over the phone. And they were like, you've got to review Risen. You know, we watched it. And it was really good. I was like, oh, okay. You know, my family was really solid. Uh, I actually... <laughs> I hate to say this because I went in with high hopes and thinking that, oh, I'm going to really love this movie. I like I didn't think it was like awful, but I was kind of disappointed. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I didn't love it. And I have some reasons why. We'll get to that in a minute. But... You see, what you have to do is always go with the lowest expectations ever and expect <laughs> crap. And then after that. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say weird, that it had a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of yeah. Yeah. I, But I can't do that. Because, I know, like, even though I, I, know. I criticize movies. I want them to be good. I, just yeah. like it, it could have been better in several areas, in my opinion. Yeah, you see that. that you see, that's one of the methods of being a film critic. Expect crap. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I, I do kind of agree with you. Like, like everyone was telling me that. Oh, this is you know definitely like the the best Christian film from uh, this year. And I, I can't say I was disappointed or like let down or anything. I, I will say that this is my favorite Christian film that I've seen this year, but yeah, I can't really get like all the hype around it. Uh, like it, it seems like a very straightforward, decently made, decently acted, and honestly not like bad like Christian interpretation of like a uh, of a fictional tale that happened. Yeah. Or with the with this non fictional story. Yeah. So. Uh, overall, I thought it was it was decent. It was good, and I enjoyed it, and definitely my favorite of this year. But yeah, it didn't blow me away or anything like that. Well, we have seen a lot of different movies lately that show different perspectives on the life of Christ in terms of his crucifixion, mm -hmm. or in Ben Hur, where it follows him a little bit before that. We saw the Young Messiah, we saw the old Ben Hur, and the new Ben Hur, and now we're seeing Risen. And I did enjoy Risen a lot because it offered another perspective that was really unique, you know, from uh, someone who is right with Pilate and trying mm -hmm. to deal with, like, how do we keep the peace in Rome? And these Christians might steal the body to make a big hoax, a big, like, uh, big show for um, their beliefs and how we stop that and then you also have this big rough and tough guy who didn't really need God to accomplish anything even though he did pray to Mars at one point to keep all of his accomplishments but that's about it hmm. so he had this whole different perspective that was very intriguing and interesting for me to watch for sure I enjoyed it um, it I'd agree with Ned and that it was my favorite that we've watched uh, thus far. Yeah, for me, there were a lot of things I did like about it. One thing that immediately popped out to me is that I thought they were able to use their $20 million budget to the absolute maximum of its capacity. The yeah. scale and sense of scope, yeah. like the sets were really oh, good. Absolutely. Oh, I remember yeah. the sets. Um, no, yeah, they were beautiful yeah. sets. And then also, there was, it was another aspect of showing a story that we haven't seen before. Like, yeah. All throughout and watching Christian movies, there's some stories that you just hear over and yeah. over and over again, like the Easter story, yeah. or especially the Nativity story. Yeah. 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 But Always. this time, it was similar to like the Young Messiah, which one thing that intrigued me about the premise is seeing the child Jesus is not something you see much. This was another thing of, let's make a movie about after the crucifixion, mm. what happens right. afterwards. And yeah. so it was really interesting to see a film interpretation of that time period as well because it's something that's not ex as expanded upon. One thing uh, that perhaps we can jump into is one thing that was interesting to me at the beginning of the film was that I wasn't quite sure when it was taking place at first. We were trying to figure it out yeah. because we saw Barabbas at first and we were like, yeah, oh, is this before was... he gets arrested? Yeah. And then we were like, oh, wait, no, this is after he's gotten arrested and after he's been released. released. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of one of the big problems. Just like for the uh -huh. first like five, ten minutes of the video, we didn't know where the timeline was. Yeah. We couldn't <laughs> figure things out. Like, well, the thing was, it's because at first we were like, oh, this is like significantly. At first we were like, oh, this is before the crucifixion. Then we we're like, oh, wait, this is way after the crucifixion. 
And then we were like, oh no, wait, it's the same day as the crucifixion. Yeah, like yeah. Up there now. Barabbas managed to get released and then immediately start another rebellion. The same yeah, day. yeah. He's been, he's, he he's been a busy guy, you yeah. know. <laughs> he's got a tight schedule. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, despite that, I was legitimately impressed right out of the gate with this movie for its battle sequence. Oh, the yeah. Yes. The that I was not expecting yeah. well, it I mean, to be as good as it was. At first, I was a little worried because it looked like the rebellion was kind of beaten up on the Roman soldiers. And these guys are kind of like the finest warriors. In mm. the world at that time, and then they start forming up and kicking their butts. Yeah, they did there you go. This is like, yeah. you go, Romans, really you go. No, it was awesome. They did traditional Roman, like, army moves, as yeah. I would call them. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I've been sick of seeing all these CGI battle scenes yeah. in so many movies these days, and they didn't have that at all. And they were really just plowing through the other mm -hmm. side, and it was very, yeah, realistic and mm -hmm. awesome to see. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It, 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 it felt a lot more um, uh, grounded in realism. And it had a lot of like really like cool element. I like like David said. I love the battle sequence and everything. And I also do agree with the whole that this story was very interesting because it takes place you know right after the crucifixion. And it doesn't really there aren't really a lot of movies that do touch upon the crucifixion. And I think this is one of the very first examples of like really tackling the topic of the crucifixion mm -hmm. and. Um, and especially, you know, and waiting three days and uh, Jesus rising from the dead and everything. And it tackled that concept of mm -hmm. um, hardcore. Where uh, there have been other movies that have tackled the, mm -hmm. um, like, right after the crucifixion. But those were more so, like, personal, like, faith stories. Mm -hmm. Although Risen does have that, it also tackles the resurrection. And, like... It makes it almost like a like an ancient mystery, yeah, kind of thing. Or, or like the best way I can probably describe it is a uh, uh, cops Roman style, <laughs> 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 um, because uh, one of the best examples um, of the movie of a movie that takes place right after the crucifixion is uh, the Robe, which mm -hmm. is um, great Christian classic. And there's another one I never watched all the way through, and I only saw like one clip of it. And there's actually a movie based on the story of Barabbas, apparently, I mm -hmm. think. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's just called Barabbas. Mm -hmm. and, um, original. <laughs> I know, so original. <laughs> and um, it's about, like, his story as well after the crucifixion. He doesn't get killed. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, like, the first one which really tackles that. And I really, really appreciated that. And I love, like, the mystery ancient roman cop feel to it and yeah. everything it, it was it was unique and it was really cool yeah. and especially for a christian film which seems to have like their own formula all the time and it seems to be repeated over and over and over again one thing that was interesting to me also about this movie is that it seems like with every christian movie we've what we've watched this year you always got to have some a-list actor from hollywood oh, of course in there so like with the younger side, we had Sean Bean from God's Not Dead 2. We had Sabrina the Teenage Witch from Ben-Hur. We had Morgan Freeman. And for this film, Risen, we had the Harry Potter tour. We I had, know! <laughs> we had Tom Felton, Draco Malfoy, and then Voldemort's brother. Wait, uh, really? Yes, oh. the guy who plays, or the guy who plays Voldemort in the Harry Potter uh, franchise, his brother, Joseph Fiennes, is the main actor in this movie. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. why he looks so much like him. Okay. Yeah. Really? That makes so much more sense. Right. So yeah, well, what did you guys think of the acting? I, I thought the acting was was very, very good. Um, especially for um, a Christian film, you know? Um, the, the last movie that I was even remotely impressed with um, their acting capabilities was in I'm Not Ashamed. I was really impressed with, um, oh, what was the main actor's name again? Josephine's. Josephine's, okay. I was really impressed with um, his character and his, like, you know, really big, tough guy kind of thing, but also someone who was um, actively seeking truth. And he was, all, he was a very, like, really big, tough guy, but he was also very merciful. Like, mm -hmm. you could tell that in, like, his interview with um, Mary Magdalene, like, he thought, I'm like, okay, he, you could clearly thought, he clearly thought, okay, this woman's crazy, you know, like, uh, you're clearly insane, but honestly, I am not going to, like, judge you and think that you're in, like, some weird conspiracy theory kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, I just think that maybe you're a little bit crazy, or you could also tell within his acting that, you know, maybe there's a little bit of truth to this, you know, but mm -hmm. 
obviously him being a Roman, he's going to go ahead and doubt that anyway. So mm-hmm. I thought that was really impressive. And also one thing that I found that was that's lacking in a few like other like Christian movies to a certain extent is good humor. <laughs> This movie had really decent humor. I love the interactions between um, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the lead Roman soldier and Peter. It was just glorious. Yeah, so there's several great comedic scenes in here. The first time, the first really big one I can remember is when we first meet, what was it, Bartholomew? Was he the first um, disciple? Yes, meet? he was the first disciple. Yeah, so Bartholomew, that was interesting because he's not one who really has any lines in the Bible. He's yeah. just sort of one of the 12. And in this one, they give him his own character, his own voice. Yeah. And uh, when I was talking to other people <laughs> about it, it was almost like, he's kind of like a hippie. He seemed very, very high hippie. High on Jesus, yeah. kind of like. Um, he's just happy about everything. He, he's the guy who comes out after a fop. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, a fop is a festival of praise here at Franciscan, so. Yeah, <laughs> after they're like, you will be crucified unless you tell us where Jesus' followers are. And he's like, okay. There, yeah, 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 everywhere. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, I mean, I, mean I, I, the funny thing is, I didn't even face palm at that because I'm just like, you know what, your acting is good. It you're really, good. you're really selling this. Thing. Okay. Gosh, the script writing was, a, it was refreshing. Yeah. In sense, did they have one or two lines here and there that mm-hmm. that were cheesy? Like, eh. yeah. yeah. But especially the part when he's interviewing Bartholomew, Bartholomew and Mary Magdalene, I was expecting it to be way worse or something. Where it's like, so about this Jesus, and be like, oh, you know, and then just be. No, it was actually it was it was, it was it was natural, intense, and at the same time, like like a nonchalant like this interview or, or, or like with someone saying like, hey, tell me what you know. And it's just like, ah, you know, crank, crazy thing. But. <laughs> <laughs> the only problems I really had was taking stuff that is not part of an original story, taking parts of the ultimate story, the Bible, mm-hmm. and just completely eliminating or very much changing them. There's a reason that everything is in the Bible there, there's a specific story it has to tell. Mm. And when you take those out, you can be taking out a lot of different things that you might think, oh, this is no big deal. Actually, it is. And speaking of the Bartholomew thing, I think he was the first one to mention a phrase that I cringed at every single time <laughs> I heard throughout the rest of the movie. Oh, dear. It was the, there are no enemies. Uh, and then later on, when the soldier let go his friend who was in the Roman army that was trying to capture them, uh, he disarmed him, but then let him go. He's like, there are no enemies. Be like, that is not biblical. Because Christ says specifically, we do have enemies, but we're called to love those enemies. We can't love enemies mm-hmm. if we don't have any enemies. If we say there are no enemies, then we're just like, there's no sacrifice. There's no suffering in that. You know, you have enemies. If you, if, if you have a major disagreement with someone, yeah, you have an enemy. But you're called to love them. You're supposed to care for them regardless even if you are enemies, you, you can't be friends with everybody. People are going to disagree with you. People are going to hate you. And they make themselves your enemy. So that sounded very indifferent when they said that. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's too nice and fuzzy wuzzy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That point in particular that kept being spread throughout. Like, no, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no. That is not, that is not. Yeah, and there are several other things that weren't. Yeah, it's interesting to me because we we switched up the seating arrangements when we were watching this movie. So it was my first time sitting next to Joe watching this. (laughs) And if there was a cinema sins for literal (laughs) theological sins, Joe would be the host for it. Because every time, like any little thing that was off, I would just hear him next to me like, uh, that's not accurate. It didn't happen this way. Yeah. And just point out every little thing. Well, jo- in, well, in Ned's part, you hear um, Ned just go, <sighs> and any parts he just likes, and then Joe yeah. going, no, no, I'm not accurate. Like, screw it. You're just going to like, 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 and Ned's sighing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that also bothered you, Joe, which uh, was unfortunately also one of the most comedic scenes, uh, which was with Peter, um, when the soldier was interacting with Peter, which was a very funny scene where um, the main character, he finally finds the disciples much later in the film, and then he, uh, Peter, Peter walks up to him and he thinks he's a soldier, so he swipes around and lashes him in the foot, or the leg, and Peter's really, really angry about this. 
Um, and he's like, I was bringing you water! And he just pours the water all over the ground. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's intense, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, I did like, it was great as a Peter's character, but it just didn't strike me as right in the movie just because it was like only the second disciple we had seen. Yeah. And yeah, all the disciples have a character, and that is consistent with sort of like the very rough character of Peter in the Bible, but it yeah. was almost like, these guys are supposed to be high on Jesus. Why is Peter just <laughs> angry? He's really like, vengeful yeah. like that. And then later on when they're passing around communion at the fire, Peter takes a piece of bread and um, the main uh, character is sitting outside. He just tosses it over um, oh, yes. his head. Hey. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you can have like this guy with Peter. And yes. I just heard Joseph was like, no. exactly that. No, no. Oh gosh, that part really, really I mean, grinded your gears. This is made by Protestants. <laughs> they don't know what's going on. Now they're over here but... like Kobe. It's like, no. No. <laughs> you don't you, toss it. Even if this was supposedly holy bread, you don't throw it like you do a napkin when you're done with it into the trash can. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. No. But this also isn't holy bread. I mean, like, I, I just find it, even if it was holy bread, you wouldn't treat holy bread like that. But that just further is the point that we don't know how to treat something that's holy with respect as much as we should in our day and age because things become so common. Like we have daily mass and that's awesome, but sometimes we can get so used to daily mass that we forget the significance that Jesus is literally there right in front of us, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, not to mention that it's actually the Eucharist, not Holy Bread, just throwing that in there. Uh, there were a lot of things in this movie. I think I was telling you when we were in the movie, I was like, you could, this, 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 what was, what this was movie it? was made by Protestants. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> I said, I, 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 it might have said something like it, it's saturated or reeks of Protestantism. I mean, like, that can be a good thing in some aspects because honestly, I admire Protestants sometimes because they can do so much with so little. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, I, that, missing, that felt like a burn. I, 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 see, I initially took it how you meant to take it, yeah. and then I thought of the internet comments, and I was like, <laughs> well, too bad. I mean, no, no, they're missing funny. four sacraments. You know, they're missing the saints and the angels and like all and prayers and novenas and indulgences. No, yeah. They're missing and so the many book of Tobit. Uh, yeah, they're missing Tobit. <laughs> <laughs> They're missing oh all, you know, they're missing seven books in the Bible, yeah, but they still can do it with so much passion. I admire that. But yeah. they also like I was also really surprised because a lot of times Protestants are very consistent on the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Mm. And there were a lot of scenes in the Bible that you're, I mean, starting at the very beginning, the Blessed Mother was in the back of the crowd just kind of wailing and be like, Oh, it's not it's not biblical, go to the book of John. And then John was nowhere to be found in that whole scene. We were talking about that. Mm. Oh yeah, that's and right. Renee was trying to say, Maybe he's there. I was like, no, that wasn't him. Is that John? Was... Is that John? Yeah, yeah. No. no, John wasn't there. I was just like, oh, other big problem I had. <laughs> oh, here we go. Other big problem I had was towards the end when Jesus shows up on the shore, they have um, the soldier going in the boat with him, you know, where the disciples, oh, yeah. after Jesus had that? appeared to them, uh, they were out in the boat fishing and they couldn't find anything all night, just like when Jesus first met them and then he is on the shore and says, have you caught anything? Oh, yeah, you they know, messed this all up. They, they completely <laughs> messed it up because in the Bible it's very specific that when they found out Jesus was on shore, uh, Peter jumped into the water and swam to shore. The rest of the disciples took the boat and came in. But in this movie, they had like, everybody was on a Jesus high and they just jumped out of the boat. But the boat was already so close to shore, so they just kind of waited like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> like, no, there's a reason because Jesus is still, I, sorry, not Jesus. Peter is still sorry about what he did to Jesus. Oh, so, yeah, you know, so he's just, just like, it's the Lord, and he jumps in and swims after him. And just after that, what happens? It's in front of the charcoal fire where Peter asks him. That's another thing that happened later. They had not sitting down eating breakfast. They had them just walking in. And then Jesus randomly saying, Peter, do you love me? Because when we read it, we think it's random, but there's actually significance because the only two times in the book of John that a charcoal fire is mentioned is first when Peter denies Jesus, second time when he's oh. reconciled with him. So, you know, it's not random in the biblical context. Peter is making up for what he did by saying three times, Jesus, I do love you, where he denied him three times. In this movie, it's kind of the randomness that, you know, you read it and without knowing about the charcoal fire, they think it's just like, we're just randomly walking around. Peter, do you love me? Hey, uh, uh, Peter, yeah. <laughs> so I, th th that's why, like, there are things like you might not recognize that you're losing a significance, but there are a lot of different things that you can... You know, say, oh, we can, we can, we can do this differently. But you're actually removing a lot of incredible significance that's beautiful to the biblical story, and that's really yeah. what I had a problem with the most in this film. And, well, yeah. then again, like I, I, 
understand and definitely agree with like uh, those kind of complaints about the movie because I mean if if you're going to make a biblical tale make it as accurate as possible yeah. um, but at the same time and I mean granted th this is kind of like something completely different but when I always look at an adaptation of something whether it's um, you know just from a very famous book or if it's like a reboot of a movie um, Granted, those are completely different from the Bible, mm -hmm. but when I always look at an adaptation, I just look at how it's made, does it get the message across, does, is the acting good, is the um, uh, filmography good, is the editing good, is the whole movie as a whole good and everything. Yeah, and I would, and, yeah, I would yeah. agree with you on that with other... Um... With, with any other movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that, uh, and uh, and uh, I'm sorry, but the, like the thing is with, with the Bible, and, and I do agree with that, but at the same time when when it's... Um, I'm sorry, pro my, the Protestant audience out there, I am not dissing you in any way, shape, or form, but when... It, it's only because of faith stuff and whatever, but when whenever I watch a Protestant film, I do my best to not take it that seriously. <laughs> not, 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 not take the message of it seriously. Um, because the message came across and it was fine. It was good. And overall, like I said, I love this movie. It's probably my favorite Christian film of this year. But unless you're making, a, unless it's a Catholic making a movie, I am not going to take the overall biblical stuff 100% seriously. And I understand why, like, as a Christian, like, that stuff from this movie would still bother me. But although the main focus had to do with the crucifixion, had to do with Jesus' resurrection and everything, that was not the overall main focus. The main focus was on the Roman soldier and him finding his faith and a bunch of, like, other, like nitpicky storytelling stuff that had to do with the Roman soldier which is another reason why I don't really like look at this and I'm like oh you got that wrong oh you got that wrong oh you got that wrong because I'm just like okay you're not focusing on that if you are focusing fully on that if you are doing like a full on like hey this is the story of the resurrection and this is everything that happened in here and then they started like changing things up a little bit here and there that's when I would actually get like legitimately fully upset about it. Well, I think there is a little part of that, though, because, like, although the main, a lot of the plot was good, there was still that one point in the plot where they tried to drive home that didn't have anything to do with Bible, that more with the plot, was with the whole thing I mentioned earlier, there are no enemies. And I that, feel part, like that part I agree That with. That had a part in some of the changes we saw biblically. Mm. If you keep the Bible story the same, the, you know, God is, you know, he is the one that inspired the divine authors. It is the perfect love story. Yes. If you keep that the same and build off of that, instead of trying to build the bio, like the Bible story off of what you want to get, if you build it off of the Bible, your story overall is going to be better. So, yeah, you know, that's why. Like overall, this was still good because a lot of aspects they, you know, they did fall, but there were some key elements. One of my main problems being the "there are no enemies" thing, where it's like, no, you have enemies, but you have to love them. That's you know, the Christian way of evangelizing to mm -hmm. other people and you know, showing that you truly do care, that you truly do love, mm -hmm. and that affected other parts. And then, of course, just uh, whipped cream on the cake, just the the communion part well, and, and the other biblical inaccuracies. Yeah, there were little ones like you were mentioning, like they didn't fold the cloth after the. They yeah, didn't. Like I mean, the... Jesus did not fold the cloth <laughs> yeah, after yeah. the That was something I mentioned him before the shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. That was upsetting yeah. to Joe, and I was like, Joe, <laughs> according to Joe, you must make your bed every time you leave your room and the tomb. So it was just unacceptable that it was just thrown all over the place inside the tomb. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and the thing is, for me, a lot of times, those little details, I'm like, even if it's not in the biblical mm -hmm. complete accuracy. That one didn't bother me as much. I don't, but... like... I recognize that they're telling they're, they're telling a story, and it's not like those little details are just gonna like ruin the movie. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I think there was. I'm sorry. There was one more thing. When the Roman soldier is trying, he's investigating and trying to find out what happened at the tomb. Yeah. He mm -hmm. finds one of his guy, his the guys that was there, and he was drunk. Oh yeah, that's this was, so annoying. Oh. This was this was di this was contrary to sacred scripture directly because it has the guy saying. You know, we were up for a while, 
and we were really tired, so we fell asleep. But then when we woke up, this happened. No, you don't understand. Roman soldier, you know, and they somehow they mentioned it in the movie, but it just like it was there was a missing link. They recognized that when you fall asleep on duty, the penalty is death. And not just because of that, but the Roman soldiers weren't kind of just like, uh, they were the top soldiers. <laughs> they do not fall asleep mm. on duty. Yeah. It does not happen. It doesn't matter how long they've been up. They do not fall asleep on duty, at least not all of them. At the very least. Okay, at the very yeah, least. And, it made it look and, it, and in sacred scripture, the lie was that the soldiers fell asleep and that's when they took the body. And here they're just like, oh, well, let's give and take both sides. They did fall asleep, but they woke up and then everything happened. They, they didn't fall asleep at all. They made and it sound very yeah, yeah probable that the body could have been stolen because they put like the laziest, like lowest ranking Roman soldiers it looked like at the yeah. door and they snuck in alcohol with them. They were drinking the night of and then they that fell really asleep. I, and then they were like, oh, well. And it's like they had accents too. I, I, think, I, I think different I, than everyone else. It really surprised falls. me. I did not expect this from And so Pilate's um, like, of course they movie. stole the body under these two. Like I, I think I might have an answer for that. And this this has nothing to do with like, like changing like the story of the Bible or anything I think it just comes to like like film 101 mm -hmm. basically what they were trying to do is they were trying to make it like a mystery and when you are making a mystery you have to have it open for what like there are any there could be any answer out of this okay. and so obviously uh, they, they, they needed to make like the soldiers like completely like lazy drunk and whatever and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and then yeah then they woke up to it but I think it's like if they had him like full, like steadfast, hardened, and everything, and then all that happened. It's just like okay, clearly, Christ rose from the dead. Clearly, he got out. Clearly, all this happened. You need and to have some ambiguity. You need to have some audience. ambiguity. You need to have you need to have doubt to the story. And I think that's one of the things that makes this Christian film better than a lot of other Christian films. It tries not to be a Christian film in like the first half of the movie. Right, that's what it was. Oh, at the beginning, they showed it in a way that it was life went on, and actually, Jesus has already been crucified. Actually, like you would think, like it was this before. I guess it looks before because everything seems pretty like normal. It's like no, it's after, and people like easily picked up the possibilities that the body was stolen or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and parts although story. it's an ac inaccurate mm -hmm. and like both historically and biblically. Bibli bibli Biblically. Thank you. <laughs> I can't speak, guys. I swear, grammar can do. Um, Bible problem. I think that's the thing that I do like about this. It's going to sound awful because I'm just because you know it should be more bip historic. Biblically. Thank you. <laughs> Biblically accurate uh, and historically accurate. They needed to resort to storytelling 101 and they need to be like okay let's make these guys a little bit over the top let's make these guys like like if they were to go ahead and tell the story that you know jesus rose from the dead no one would believe them or uh, because they were not the s like stern heavy roman soldiers you know mm -hmm. and they were the big tough guys then exactly you're gonna go ahead to them and doubt them and be like okay really it, like you're telling me that jesus rose from the dead yeah <laughs> no that that actually didn't happen but and I, like i said from an mm -hmm. from a history not history from a mystery perspective it makes sense from a biblical <laughs> and historical way it doesn't make sense so i can agree with you but i can also disagree with you on that well see i think i'm going to disagree a little bit back uh, <laughs> oh, be oh. Oh. <laughs> because that's not exactly what happened see like the soldiers didn't come out like that were at Jesus' tomb. They didn't come out and say, "Oh, Jesus rose from the dead." They were like, oh, "No, no, no, no!" They ran no. away. Well, obviously. no, they no. Well, they didn't run away in the movie. In the movie, what happened was when they were asking them what happened, they said what the Pharisees were telling them, really stirring it up about it. And then, it, of course, even theoretically, under your explanation of how the soldiers were, it, they still could have made it accurate in the end. Where when he's explaining the story, he doesn't say they fell asleep. It still would have been just as mysterious anyway. But to continue my disagreement, uh, in all respect, obviously. Obviously. Um, 
<laughs> we're not YouTube commenters. No, no, no. We're, see, we're actually we're actually nice to each other. So <laughs> you're insulting our audience. <laughs> <laughs> commenters are polite, except for some of you. You know who you are. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, obviously, I'm not what can you say? Everybody. <laughs> it's unfair to refer to everyone. Just of course. you know, the certain people. YouTube there's, stereotype. Okay, of, if there's someone out there, like, anyway, I didn't know I was being so rude. <laughs> All those swear I'm not words. talking to you. I didn't mean to oh. take it that way. Oh. I better change my comment. <laughs> yeah. oh, we have like a, a comment, like uh, a commenter, like completely convert and change their ways because <laughs> that would be quite amazing. Yes. But anyway, continue. I'm <laughs> sorry. But anyway, like the mysterious part about it came that these soldiers were so like, yeah, this happened. Yeah. Sure. But like you could tell in their eyes something was wrong. If these soldiers were still stern and strong beforehand, they were kind of like. Yeah, this happened, but you can still see that same doubt. Mm -hmm. Say that soldier ends up getting drunk, or that soldier ends up being confronted, and he keeps pursuing, like, what happened? What happened? And that soldier, because of what happened af like, at the resurrection, was so, you know, it was so incredible that this big, tough guy eventually just is like, like, is just having a hard time explaining this, and is just so, like, distraught over, like, I couldn't believe what was before my eyes. You know, the mis mystery unfolds then. It's just like, Ro you don't get to Roman soldiers, but this guy, there's something in his eyes. And then this big guy breaks down like, this thing happened and I don't know what it was. I think there could still have been a mystery with that. Now, if you wanted to have your kids watch this movie, if it'd be like a family film, there is one scene where Pilate wanted them to go and find all the bodies that had been recently buried or all the fresh graves. And in those scenes, they get pretty graphic and yeah. they go to the big pit where they throw all the uh, crucified people mm. in the past week or whenever and that's kind of gross though they keep it out of focus you still see like things you don't want to see yeah so, it is rather gruesome that really ooh, even i mean I'm actually wondering. i don't know there were several scenes where they did show a close-up oh show. yeah no they did oh, they yeah. were, okay i guess i was like this because I, <laughs> I was already like, like oh not again like because we saw that scene at the beginning with like all the crucifixion pit where they throw all the bodies. Yeah. And then, and then later oh, on. Too much sound effects in that too when they threw the bodies. Oh yeah, that was. A little... Then okay, there's so... the later scene where they're like, all right, you have to go dig up every body we've crucified and find Jesus' this body. And it's like, oh my gosh. Oh, going through oh, all those bodies. And then they was... bring back one too. That was disgusting. Looking at it on the ground. Oh, that was awful. Yeah, anyway, oh. so as for a family like, friendly I'd rather, I'd rather, it's like, I'd rather fall asleep at the tomb. <laughs> yes, I would rather. In other words, death sentence. Yeah, like. Anyway, so if you want to, you're kid to watch this movie with you maybe wait a few years because no. that was pretty gross and in addition to the battle scene like this movie it surprised me with how intense it was this was like borderline pg-13 it was yeah. basic, it was almost r mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. like um, yes it was very intense but very well done very realistic because yes. that actually happened and that's disgusting yeah it happened yeah, yeah. they just showed a bit much for mm -hmm. maybe a younger audience yes yeah and then we also got a cameo in the shroud of Turin. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I didn't really have too much of a problem with that. It's just um, kind of funny. It's I mean, just sort of like, aha, I see that see Easter, what you egg. Did there. Yeah. Yeah. Easter egg. Yeah, Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. All right, so huh, like, it's an Easter egg. Oh, <laughs> stop! Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I want it. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so Joe, what is your final verdict? It's kind of around where the new Ben Hur. Was I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 65%. Um, just the whole there are there are there are no enemies among us. You we don't have any enemies. That whole thing and everything that it brought along with it, along with inaccuracies. But it was much better than stuff like God's Not Dead or The Young Messiah that we've seen. So I'd go with 65%. -ish. Uh, for my rating, I would probably give it a an 80. Nice B minus. <laughs> You're not seeing it, Ned, but Joe just like. I hey wow. hey hey after I, after a lot of the movies I have seen <laughs> this year. Oh my gosh, this felt so refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, okay, okay I mean, okay. I mean, okay, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, okay, that's. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say I give Risen an eighty. Wow. Well. I, uh, when I went into the movie, I assumed it'd be pretty good, and I thought it really uh, rose to the occasion <laughs> and my expectations, despite its inaccuracies. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm glad we have Joe to bring those biblical uh, truths out so that when you do watch the movie, we have no worries of getting drawn in by some inaccuracies that could lead us in the wrong direction, potentially. So thank you, Joe, for your input on those, as usual. And thank you, Ned, for expanding on all your knowledge of film. 
and you too, David, because of all your knowledge of film as well, noticing <laughs> the makeup and the lighting in the scenes and what camera they use. Heck, anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching New Catholic Generation, and we'll be back again soon with another movie or something else. We'll see what we can come up with for you. Thank you for watching, and God bless. <laughs> and also, I give the movie maybe six out of seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs>